Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here and this is part 10 of the course on building products with JavaScript. Um, today I want to uh, recap what I've done so far in live streams uh, about uh, Jest, unit testing React components, Redux store and RxJS uh, epics. So let's start with what Jest actually is. If you haven't heard about it, Jest is a test runner and uh, basically zero configuration testing platform uh, by the Facebook guys. Um, some time ago, it wasn't actually that good. It was quite painful to use it, but it still had some very nice tools made specifically for React.js. Since then, they actually improved it quite a lot and I've really enjoyed writing uh, unit tests for React using Jest because it was very straightforward and very easy to do. Um, the other part we'll be using to, so Jest is, you know, testing framework and test runner. So we actually need the library for uh, testing React components um, in a nice way, let's put it this way. So there is a library called Enzyme. It's made by Airbnb guys, and uh, it allows you to do very nifty things um, like shallow rendering, for example, or uh, full DOM rendering if you need that. In this case, we don't really need that because our components are pretty straightforward. Uh, static markup and all that kind of stuff. So together with Jest, they work really, really well. Uh, and um, I, you know, since I've haven't actually used them, uh, and before that, like before doing this uh, live stream and before doing this for this specific project, I actually did manual JS DOM testing, which is kind of painful in comparison to all of this. So I followed this nice article on Hacker Noon by Artyom Sepegin, uh, testing React components with JS and Enzyme. I will put it in the description to the video. So if you want to read the whole article, which is, you know, kind of good, uh, you can go ahead and do that. But uh, just to give you the idea, like the basically the whole setup of the Jest and Enzyme is uh, this one setup file. All you do is you uh, import um, shallow render and mount functions from Enzyme. Uh, in this case, I've imported the RxJS to have the complete RxJS environment uh, as we usually do. And I mocked the local storage because we are using um, local storage for our authentication parts, but you know, the Node.js doesn't really have local storage. And then you just expose globally the React and um, Enzyme functions. Uh, and we uh, skip the, uh, in this case, this is again from the article, it's a nice thing to skip the um, React element, uh, create element warnings that are produced by Enzyme, I believe. So yeah, that's, it's very straightforward, it's quite easy. Again, I will put those links to all of those tools in the uh, description to the video. So you know, you can just take them and uh, have a look by yourself. But uh, let's get to the testing. So I've tested essentially four things in the project. Uh, first thing being our utility functions. Again, you know, we have some functions here and they are very, very straightforward. They take in some data and then return something else. So again, testing that is very simple. Um, I get, I'm just import them and then I, you know, expect that this function when you pass in one argument to be returning something else. This, I mean, come on, you know how that works. So I won't, I won't spend a lot of time explaining that. Now the interesting part. So um, the second thing I'm testing is obviously React component. So here we have our locking component, which uh, renders a login form, right? So it has a username, password, it has a button that we should press. And then it triggers some functions that are um, both passed in into our stateless component. And as well, we have this wrapper component that is connected to our uh, Redux store. So we actually need to test two entities, right? The component itself and then wrap component that actually should uh, trigger the store correctly. So here's how the test looks. Uh, first of all, I use React uh, Redux mock store, sorry, um, that is creates a fake store that basically does only what I want it to do. And in this case, we test the rendering of the wrapper so that, you know, we actually renders the uh, correct user and we pass in store like this. So uh, the match snapshot thing is a uh, just um, internal part, I guess, let's call it this way. And the idea is that the first time you run the test, it will generate those snapshots that look like this. So basically, this is um, rendered to string component with all the functions and everything um, that will be generated again by Jest itself. And then um, once you rerun it, unless obviously you don't change anything, it should always match this snapshot. So it's, it's you know, it's a nice way to check if it's actually rendered correctly, because you can just have a look at the snapshot and see, okay, you know, all the parameters, all the classes, 
all the IDs and so on and so forth are correct. So when you rerun it next time, they should be exactly the same. Works really well. And you know, writing this test is just, it's just really easy. If your components are dumb, this is a very cool way to do this. Okay, the next part is a bit tricky. So we're going to use the internal component and we're going to pass in the token and the functions that are actually triggered and make sure they are triggered. So in this case, um, nav to home is uh, something that is basically called if there's a token. So I just, you know, in this case, I just check expected to be called basically. I guess there's a better way of doing that because in the jest you can more create um, mock functions and then just, you know, expect it to be called, but whatever that works. Right. So, and then the um, thing that I do next. So first I again match the snapshot, just make sure it rendered correctly. Then I mount it actually as a component. And then in this mount, I actually search for user input, user password, and uh, remember checkbox, I assign them new values, and then I simulate the click, which means that once I click it, it should call this on login function that already checks all the login password and remember stuff, right? So and uh, that works again perfectly fine. This this kind of stuff is I mean it's incredibly easy to write this test with Jest. So this is the second part. Now third part is reducers. Obviously we want to test our like again. Uh, let me just go back here. So this this stuff tests our uh, store right. So this test that the integration with store is correct. This tests the components themselves, and now we have to test the reducers and make sure they actually do the actions that they are supposed to do. So here's our authentication reducer. It has essentially um, four actions, uh, register success, login success, and login and register errors, which are, um, okay, at the moment this is like super stupid, but hey. Uh, and uh, the tests for reducers are super easy, right? Because those are just functions. So what we can do is we can import the auth reducer, and then we just import action types. And what we do is we say, okay, here's the test state, which is our initial state. And here's the action, which should be just type something. And then we just check that return value is actually correct. So in this case, you know, if, if you, um, if register is success, it should return redirect to login, right? That's it done. And everything else, you know, look pretty much the same. So in this case, we just check that, okay, actually, correctly changes the value. So login success, it should um, assign the user uh, or expo expand the payload into the properties and as well set the uh, local storage. I don't think I actually check local storage, which is a part that I missed. So there should be, um, let me write that down real quick. So to do um, check local storage, right? So this is again, something I forgot, somehow missed it, but it happens. So it's always, there's always space to improve basically. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it's again, it's really straightforward. Now, the interesting part is testing um, RxJS epics. So on one hand, those are also functions, but they do not return values, they return observables, right? So it's a bit trickier than you expect. Plus, I had a bit of a headache of uh, trying to figure out how this off type works, because this is not the part of RxJS itself, but the part of um, actually Redux observable. So there's this actions observable that has this off uh, type method. And you know, I had some time like tracking that down. So the idea is actually quite similar to um, reducers, but here it works in a different way in a way that you know, you have to actually subscribe to the result, and then you will get the um, resulting data. Because it's observable as a, in a callback, right? So um, it works more or less in the same way. So I create the payload response input, I create new input observable uh, from this actions observable. And then I mock the Ajax function because you know, we don't really have a server and setting up server is a bit of a pain. So just mocking function and making it return our mock value is fine. Again, you know, since this is actually observables, we want to return observable as well. And in this case, it's just like response, uh, which will simulate the response from the Ajax function. And then I just make sure that you know, the post, for example, was called, it was called with the correct um, parameters. And then I expect results to be, you know, login success and the payload to be exactly what I send in the response, right. And then the second time, uh, so in this case, I test it twice, because it will be triggered twice, because there are um, uh, there's a merge map. And uh, this observable off returns two uh, dispatches two values, let's put it this way. 
So first one will be our actual like login success. And the second one is this uh, notification um, action that should be reduced to notification. So in this case, you know, I see like, if it's a second response, then check it for notification. That's pretty much it. And then yeah, obviously I tested for errors. So I just throw in some random stuff and I don't mock uh, Ajax, which means it will just die with uh, Ajax error here. So that's what I check. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. I mean, there are some uh, trickier things, like for example, user tests are um, pretty large. No, wait, was it question tests? Yeah, question tests are quite large because we do like we we have get all questions, answer question, create question. But you know, I won't st stop too much here because if you want to see how all of that created and how all of it works, you can just go and watch the live streams. But uh, basically, right now we are finished with. Um, very, very basic, very first version of um, our kind of framework for the app, I guess, because, you know, there's no real logic right now, but it kind of works and all of the parts are there. So we have something that we can build upon. Uh, and uh, I want to stop with the development right here and then create the continuous integration and deployment, uh, um, yeah, continuous integration and delivery for the client side first so that we have a nice Docker container that will um, contain the client side. And then we'll create continuous uh, deployment for both containers on one of my servers, to, you know, to just show you how you can do that with um, GitLab CI, for example, yeah. Um, I guess that's it for the part 10. Um, another note, um, I just basically, if you, I don't know if you ever was on a Gitter. So the thing is that um, lately it just stopped sending me notifications. So I have created a discord server. Um, I don't, I don't actually know if I'm logged in here. Uh, yes, I am. So I created a discord server, um, that were, no, I'm not logged in. Okay. Whatever. There is a link to discord server that works way better than, uh, GitLab and we can have multiple channels for announcements, for discussing JavaScript, for discussing continuous deployment, whatever. So it's way nicer. So if you have any questions, if you want to talk about something, if you need any help with JavaScript, join the Discord server and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be I'm there like 80% of time and I'll be happy to answer your questions and help you. And this time around, I will actually get notifications. So there you go. Uh, that's the last thing I wanted to say. I guess uh, that will be it for today. Thank you for watching and um, see you next time. Bye.